Jacqueline, you know, um, selling things for her orchestra, and uh, Joni told me that uh, that she made her goal that she was shooting for. So congratulations to her. So uh, we'll say happy anniversary to Jim and Linda. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, dear friends. Happy anniversary to you. So happy birthday to anniversary to Jim and Linda. Uh, let's see, Bible study starts this Wednesday here at 5.30, so um, if uh, anyone would like to volunteer to bring, you know, the finger foods of some kind, a couple of people is all we need for this one here, and uh, so you can talk to Ann after the service, and I'm, I'm just designating so now. Thank you. And so, but... Uh, um, so uh, get a hold of her, and so that starts at 5:30, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later. And also, of um, course, Sunday is coming up on March 19th. That's next Sunday, and that's where we take up a special collection for Umcor, and that goes towards their administrative costs. And also, our um, mission focus for this month uh, is Umcor, and uh, so um, we keep all that. In going so keep that in mind as well and uh, the luncheon is next Sunday right after the service and uh, we'll be corned beef and cabbage is on the menu so um, if you didn't sign up the papers up here and, and so I'll just tell you my corned beef venison my corned venison is in the brine right now and so that's coming next week as well so, um, and I'll mark it for all these <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that just means more for me, so, so let's see, and uh, let's see, uh, we got to thank you from the Good Samaritan Food Pantry, thank you very much for your recent donation of soup to the Good Samaritan Food Pantry, the pantry's clients and the board of directors appreciate your kind and thoughtfulness um, and support, so um, we got that, and also now, Frank. Um, Frank is going to make an announcement about our pot of gold. Actually, I was talking to my friend, the leprechaun. He's been stated. He wanted to make sure I thanked everybody for, who's helping to get the pot of gold to help on some of the uh, church special needs projects that we're working on. But there are more envelopes. Uh, we'll be doing it through the month of March. And uh, basically, there's he's put uh, three envelopes up here with different projects on them. Youth donation, uh, decorations, the 125th anniversary. There's several different ones. And there's also some blank ones. Or even if you take one and mark it off and say, hey, I want to support this. You know, those would be things that help us with our budget. Those little things that kind of add up all together in one end. So uh, he's uh, watching us. You know how he, they hide away in their little bit. But we want to help him fill up the pot of gold. So those are available on the tree or on the table. and. Of course, it's obvious where the product gold is. <laughs> Just to verify something, you can obviously see that Frank does talk to the <laughs> No, I don't. There's a leprechaun. I know. I saw him. Uh -huh. Special prayers for Frank. And his little leprechaun. It's the water. Let's see. Let's have a word of prayer and we'll go to the call for worship. Father God, Father, we know that you do laugh, and we know that you do ask us to have fun in church. But this is also the time where we come together and just in, in seeking your wisdom and knowledge. And so today we laugh, and we have a good time, but we also um, take that time to examine the scripture the, today of the, the woman at the well, the, the, the Samaritan woman who was, you know, shunned by the city in which she lived in, but also um, that, di that distance. That, that, that separation between Jews and Samaritans. So, Father, we, as, a, as the body of Christ, we as a church are being like Jesus and that Samaritan woman. We are breaking down the barriers that society has put up between us, between that of religion and that of the, the real world, that of uh, being who we are in Christ and that of who we are in the world. And so, Father, we are being just like the, the Samaritan woman and Jesus, and we are breaking down those barriers and understanding that we are all different. And so, Father, as we know that we are different, 
We are united as well. We, and we are united in the body of Christ. And so, Father, today we come together seeking your wisdom and knowledge, singing praise to your name, <coughs> praying that the Holy Spirit will enlighten us to the very message of Jesus today, and that is receiving the living water. And taking that living water so that we gush out that water to others. And so, Father, today, let us open up our hearts. Let us open up our minds. Let us receive the glory of God and see how we are to be in this world in which we live. May we come together in this body, embracing each other and knowing that you are there with us, uniting us, loving us, caring for us. Father, we pray this day that the Spirit of the living God will open up our hearts and our minds to receive your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's join together in the call to worship.
And so we'll start with that. But the majority of what we're going to do is, I need you because I didn't bring the books while we didn't have them all, is check your email because we're going to send, I'm going to send out the scripture to, through the email to all the church. I'll put it on the Facebook page. All right, Facebook page too. And what you need, what I would like for you to do is read the passage, read this verse before you come in. And then that's the one we're going to talk about. And each week we're going to have a scripture that we're going to read. And then you can look at these questions because we'll hand out the books this Wednesday. And you can look at the questions and we're going to discuss those. But I think it's going to be something that's going to be a lot of fun, meaning the videos that we're going to look at, studying the scriptures. And we're going to look at two things. What I like about Max and Kate's book is that some of the questions were based on what the Bible says, you know, what they're dealing with in their culture and that kind of thing. But also there's another set of questions that we'll deal with, you know, life lessons, things that we deal with today. And so I like the way he did it. And so in there, we're not getting graded on nothing or anything. We're doing it. This is all open. This is something that we just, what did you hear through the week as you read that? We're going to discuss it. Nobody is right. Nobody is wrong. And we're just going to kind of learn this passage together. And so in there, so when we hand this out, the one thing that I would say is bring your Bible, you know, so that we can go through this and look at different verses. Because one of the things that I'm going to talk about is kind of what's happening, what Matthew sees. And sometimes I might compare that to what Luke or Mark, you know, says in there. And so we're going to kind of look at the Gospels and how the different, the disciples seen things in different ways. Or had a point that they wanted to bring up more, that was more important than what the other kind of said. So we're just going to kind of have fun with this. Like we said, we'll have some favorite food. We're not going to have a dinner time and that kind of thing. We're just, you come in, whenever you get there, you can make something, take it back to your table, just sit there and we're just kind of, we're going to have a good time together, a fellowship time together that we can really study the Word of God and do this. So hopefully we can make it fun and hopefully, I think it goes really good with our scripture today with this Samaritan woman coming to the well. Me and Jesus said that he has this living water to offer. And in the sermon title, it's thirsty. And then you get a little question mark for water or for the Bible. And I think that we're thirsty for the word of God. We're thirsty for the scriptures. We're thirsty to learn more about this living water. And that's what we're going to do together. We're going to learn more about the scriptures through this. And so I think about it. I hope anyone, everyone will come and be a part of that. And so hopefully, you know, we have, I think I have plenty of books, so don't worry about that. And, and so um, I just hope to see everybody there. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you and praise you for this, this time that we have here in the church to learn more about the scriptures, to, to, to come together and, and to see how each one of us, when we read a passage, it, that sometimes we read it and we don't understand, but it's through the discussion that we'll better understand together. But sometimes we read a passage and we one person sees this and another person sees this, and that just means that God is speaking to each of us in a different way. And so, Father, we're going to be like the Samaritan woman and that of Jesus, and in the di- in that that disconnect where people said, "How can you talk to a woman, let alone a Samaritan woman?" We're going to say that we come together embracing each other and our differences. And we come together for that one purpose, because the spirit of the living God, that living water that Jesus speaks of, is just being poured out upon this church. It's just being poured out upon the people of this church. And then to embrace that, that, that wisdom and that knowledge that God is trying to share with us is something that we need to do, and we need to fully embrace. And so... Um, we come together not as one being greater than another, but we are all equal because God speaks to us in different ways. And so we're going to share that love of God that we have in our relationship with each other. And I think that's a very powerful and very, very warming and loving relationship that we can have with God through this Bible study. So, Father, I just pray this day that each and every one of us can kind of look at ourselves and ask, us the, ask ourselves this question. 
Are you thirsty? Are you thirsty for that living water? Then come and experience the Bible. Come and experience the Word of God on Wednesday nights. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As we come together in our time of uh, prayer, do you have any joy or concern to share this morning? Cookie back in for prayer. Continue prayers for Cookie. Yes, Betty? All my family has certain special ones that's from Florida. She's got the COVID again. Oh, wow. And she's really, really bad. She's in the hospital. Mm -hmm. All right. She appreciates your prayers. All right. Prayers for Betty's sister. And Linda. Linda and all of her family. So, yeah. Shirley? Eddie. Eddie? Um, Uncle Lee. Linda, Uncle Lee, Dan, Linda, Dan, and Genevieve, my 101-year-old neighbor, they are sending her home from the hospital one day in hospice. Oh. So, um, first for her and the family. And first for Genevieve and her family, and because she's being sent home in hospice. And who was the last one? Jenny. Jenny. You do hers for Jenny as well, Frank? Uh, the Red Hawks and Joshua. Um, my sister Norma Jean, um, Bob, and my grandson Bryce, and family unity. Anyone else? Safe travels for my mom and my two sisters. As, uh, they're down at my aunt's house in southern Illinois, and uh, so they're traveling home today. So uh, prayers for uh, safe travels for them. Um, joy, you know, for both my kids, Dave. Uh, with the knee replacement, I think he's up and about going anywhere and everywhere. My granddaughter had a, a concert through a band or orchestra, or whatever she's in, and went down to the Indy and Joy, they won gold. And uh, so I finally have a grandkid that plays an instrument. And so I uh, went through all my kids and myself and all that and, and finally got one grandkid that says yes. Huh? Well, Carter played one year and said, that's well, it. Right. And, and Brayden, and then this is her first okay. year. Okay, quitting doesn't count. <laughs> I finally got a great <laughs> I quit. <laughs> that's, that's like saying I play the guitar and I don't. So, but uh, Ari's having fun with it and doing well. So. Um, but and he's doing good. He went down. They went down to Indy for that. And Kyle also is uh, doing very well. Uh, continued prayers for patients, but he is doing uh, really good. At, uh, his appointment with the cardiologist on Thursday, and he said he's doing awesome. And everything's on track. And so thank you for all the prayers for them. And uh, uh, we need to pray for the people of California. Um, when I hear California in snow, it just doesn't make sense to me. But to see what's happening to those people and, and all the snow that they're getting is just, uh, I don't know, you're not going to convince me there's no global warming. You know, we get hardly any snow and California is getting snow. And I know the mountains and all that, but this is just uh, far beyond um, something different's happening in this world with the weather. So, uh, so keep the people of uh, uh, California in your prayers, also the um, people in Ukraine. And all those affected by the war, uh, continue first for our nation, elected officials, law enforcement, first responders, armed forces, healthcare workers, caregivers, all those affected by illness, safe travels for those on the road, all churches, all those affected by war, violence, flooding, earthquakes, and other natural disasters, our school teachers, administration, support staff, students, and God's children. And all those uh, doctors, nurses, and all our health care facilities. So, and uh, we had uh, another joy last Sunday. We had a really good time at Oak Grove um, with the residents. And, and it was just a wonderful worship service together. And so it was nice to spend time with them. And uh, uh, so it was, it was a, a great, great time sharing the message of Christ with them. So that's great. Father God, we thank you and praise you for this time together. Father, if we truly look, we can see the glory of God in everything and everywhere that we go. And so, Father, we come to church expecting to see and experience Christ. But we have that same ability no matter where we go 
outside of these four walls. So, Father, we thank you and praise you. Now we ask you, Lord, to inspire us and, and energize us and fill us with the desire to take the message of Christ into the, the, the community in, in which we live, to help others see the Christ that lives within us so that their desire to learn more of him can continue to grow. So, Father, we thank you for this time together. Father, we continue to lift up in prayer all those names that were lifted up to you today. Father, we know that you, you know each one of those situations. And Father, we pray that you reveal yourself to those who are going through struggle. We pray that you are with those who struggle. We pray, we pray that you are with the family. In all these things, Father, let them see your glory come to the, the, the rise to the top of the, the midst of whatever struggle they're going through. We continue to lift up our law enforcement officers, our first responders, those, the people of our health care facilities, students and teachers and administrative uh, staff. We pray for all of those who go into very dangerous situations to bring the message of Christ to other people. So, Father, today is a day that we, as a body, come together learning from the Word of God, learning to see things as God has seen them and brought them to the people of this world. So, Father, today we admit to ourselves that we are thirsty, that we are hungry for the Word of God. We, we desire to know and to experience more of Christ. So, Father, today we come together and we pray that your Holy Spirit is poured out upon us. May the glory of our God be revealed. May our hearts and minds be open to receive your Word today. Your people have gathered here to learn more of you. So, Father, may you hear of that desire to know you through the voices that are lifted up through the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson for today comes from the book of John, and uh, it's going to be chapter 4, verses um, 5 to 30, and then 39 to 42. And uh, so it's kind of long today, so bear with me, but... Um, it, 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 I think it's really important for us to hear because there's something that, that's so important that's happening in this other than just a woman and a man talking, other than a Samaritan and a Jew speaking at the well. Something that's happening here is that Jesus is breaking down the barriers of that society there today at, that, at this time. And I think that he is calling us to do the same is breaking down the barriers that have been placed in, in before us in society and what we live. So let us hear the word of God, word of God from John chapter 4, verses 5 to 30, 39 to 42. When he came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph, Jacob's well was there, and Jesus tired out and tired out by his journey was sitting at the, by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask me for a drink? Um, a woman of, of Samaria. Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have him, you would have had, you would have asked him, and he would have given you a living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get the living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well? And with his sons and his flocks drank from it. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give 
give them will never be thirsty. The water that I give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come back. The woman answered, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you are with now is not your husband. What have you, um, what you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you say that the place where we people must worship is Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You, you worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. For salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here. When the, worst, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father seeks such, such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called, the, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Jesus, just then the disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, What do you want? Or, Why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city and said to the people, Come. And see the man, see a man who told me everything that I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? Then they, they left the city and were on their way. Verse 39, many Samaritans from the city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything that I have done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them. He stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe. For we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. Given a name, so she is just kind of 
um, just the Samaritan woman is how she's referred to. And so in there, the Samaritan woman, she kind of comes out of town and she's going, and she's not only just a woman, and I'm sorry ladies, but that's the truth back in these days, she was just a woman, she just cooked, she just cleaned, she just provided babies, and they got upset with her, she had girls, but it's just the way it was back then. But it wasn't just that she was just a woman, and speaking with Jesus, talking to a man, but the other part was that she was a Samaritan speaking to a Jew, which is totally out of place. It's bad enough that a man and a woman not, you know, to, to, to converse and, in, in, you know, outside of the, in, in a Samaritan area, but it's bad enough that it's a Samaritan and a Jew. They didn't cross paths. They didn't talk to each other. They, they hated each other. And so this, this message that here is that Jesus is breaking down the barriers of not just the world, but of the religious world at that time. That's what it was believed to be. The Samaritans and Jews did not speak to each other. And so she comes out there, and, she, and then we've got to take it a little bit farther. She's not only a Samaritan, but she's also a, a woman that is shunned by the city, the whole city of Sakaar. Meaning because of the fact that she has had five husbands and the one she's married, the one she's with now is not her husband. She's a, she's a woman that people didn't uh, talk to, didn't correspond with, didn't hang out with. She had no friends of any kind. She was just shunned even by the city that she lived in. The reason that she came at noon was because when all the other women came to get water in the morning, in the cool part of the day, that she wasn't allowed to to hang out with them, to be a part of them coming. She had to come by herself in the middle of the day. And so Jesus is sitting there at noon in the, in the, in the heat of the day, sitting there waiting for a drink of water, knowing that she's coming. And she comes out there and he says, give me a drink. And she's kind of caught off guard by this. She's caught off by this. How can you, a Jew, speak with me, a woman, yet a Samaritan? In that sense, how can you speak to me? And Jesus says, if you knew who I was, that you would have asked me for a drink of living water. Water is very essential for our bodies. It's very essential for you, for me, for the health of our physical bodies. I was kind of doing some research, and I knew this. It's probably the only thing I remember from science or biology or whatever in school, but the body, majority of the body is water. You know, there were some things I learned that were kind of distraught and, you know, kind of hard to take, but the body is roughly made up of 60% water, but then that kind of varies too with age and, and sex and, and, and uh, you know, kind of hydration levels of everybody. But one of the things that really hurt me was the fact that, you know, I've always had an excuse, you know, I'm retaining water. How many of you have ever said that? I'm retaining water, that's why I hang over my belt, kind of thing. No, I'm retaining water. No, I'm not fat, I'm retaining water. A lot of water. But you know, I got news for you, and this is, all of you guys out there, I got news, this is, this is going to be pretty good. Glad you're sitting down. Fat has less water in it than muscle. Are you kidding me? That took everything away from my whole excuses. I'm retaining water. I'm not fat. I just have a lot of water. That's all. But it, I can't get by with saying this is all muscle. So in there, the, 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 the body, the human body, is roughly 60% water. But it can vary, 45% to 75%. You know, in different people, depending on muscle, depending on fat, you know, all that kind of thing. So it kind of varies and all these things. So in there, I'm sitting there thinking about all that, and I'm thinking about this, and so, but the important thing is that water is essential for our health. Water is essential in, in, in our body because it helps regulate the temperature of our body, and the, the water that we take it does that. It also has a, what they call a cellular um, function, meaning the cells in our body. It helps to, the water helps to uh, pull the nutrients out of the food that we eat, and it's dispersed throughout the body through the cells and all that kind of stuff. So the cellular function of the body, the water is very important for that. It's also important for our waste, you know, removing the waste from our body. 
The body takes the, the, the nutrients out of the food we eat, and then the waste passes through the body. Water is essential for that. Water is extremely essential for the physical health of our physical body. Now, I want to ask this. Why is it that we as Christians, why is it that we are not as concerned about our spiritual bodies, our spiritual growth, in a sense of that living water that Jesus speaks of, why is it that we are not as concerned about the, the, the living water that we take into our bodies? It should be extremely important as much as drinking liquids. Now, if we exercise, if we, you know, the heat, heat is, in, like Jesus was there at the noon, noon of the day, very hot there. When it's really hot, when we're exercising, we, we increase our liquid, our body, our, the, the water that we intake in. Why is it that we as Christians, as we, you know, perform our Christian duties, as we share the word of God, why is it that we wouldn't think that that same concern should be for our spiritual health in taking in the word of God, in taking? And so that's where I kind of come up with this title. Are you thirsty? What are you thirsty for? Water, which is your physical needs? Or are you thirsty for the, the scriptures? Are you thirsty for the Bible? Are you thirsty for the water of God, the living water of God? Are you thirsty for that wisdom and knowledge? What? I think we need to think about that and address that when, as we profess that we are Christian. Is that, are you thirsty? What are you thirsty for? The things of this world, meaning our physical bodies, or that spiritual health, meaning the scriptures. Now, if you look at our passage today, the, the, the woman at the well, I think that she was, a, she was somebody that was kind of shunned by the world, but... <clears throat> The world in which she lived in, her society, you know, people shunned her. They, she wasn't supposed to talk to the Jews. She wasn't supposed to do any of this. And I think she was doing everything that she could, meaning that she carried the water jars to the well, Jacob's well, you know, in the, in the middle of the day, at noontime, when people, the other people wouldn't be there. So she was doing her part in staying away from others, not causing controversy. But here she comes in and Jesus finds this opportunity to break down this barrier in the religion, you know, of that time where Jews and Samaritans didn't talk. So he breaks down this barrier by what? He didn't, he didn't point out her sins to her. She pointed that out. He didn't point out her sins, but he asked her for a drink of water. He broke down that barrier by asking her for a drink of water. She said that he didn't have a bucket, so he couldn't get the water. And, he, and she said, she said to him, he says, how are you to be talking to me, a Samaritan, and you being a Jew? How can you talk to me? And his response to her was really key to what he's trying to, in breaking that ice. He said, if you knew who you were talking to, you would have asked me for a drink of living water. Now, she's still stuck, like last week I talked about um, how they were stuck in the earthly way of thinking. She's doing the same thing. She's kind of stuck in this earthly thing, says, well, you know, how can you give me living water? Or where is this living water? You don't have a bucket, and the well is really deep. So how can you draw this water that you're speaking of? Now, she is educated in, in, the, in, in the, let's say, inner faith. Because of the fact that she said, and later on, she says, I know that the Messiah is to come, who is called the Christ. I know as he is to come. So in other words, she's telling them that she knows these things. She's, she has a faith. But what she doesn't do is she doesn't recognize who it is that she's talking to. She wasn't expecting to run into I'll bet that many times, the majority of the time, in the heat of the day, she would go to that well and there would be next to nobody that would be at that well. She would be there by herself, drawing the water and carrying it back into the town. Very, to me, I would describe her as a very lonely person. And so she says in there, she says, she said, where is this, what is this living water that you speak of? And so uh, she says, where do, you, where do you get this living water? And then she goes on to talk about Jacob, you know, giving them the wealth. They, they, they're her ancestor Jacob. 
And she was very proud of her ancestry in, in Jacob. She said Joseph was given the wealth, and even Joseph and all their kids and even the flock came in and, and drank out of this well. Can you hear how she said the ancestor Jacob and, and, and his kids and, and even his flock drank out of here? And I get to drink out of here. That was very important. I get to drink out of the same well that Jacob and all of his family and even the flock. I get to drink out of that same well. She was very proud of that. But yet Jesus says in there, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give will never be thirsty. So I have a question for all of us. Jesus says if we drink out of this well, in other words, the physical water, you're going to be thirsty again. In other words, you're going to get hot again. You're going to, your, your body's going to need this. You're going to drink and drink. You're going to have to add more and more and more. But he says that if you drink of the water that I give, you will never be thirsty again. Why is it that we are thirsty for the Word of God? Why are we thirsty for the Bible? Why is that so important to us if we have been drinking the living water all along? See, I think we're thirsty because we're not drinking it enough or even the right water. Jesus said, if you drink of this, you will never be thirsty again. We're starving for the word of God in this world that we live in. We have built barriers, it's not just, it, we've built barriers within the community and within this whole world that we live in we, that need to be torn down. I think we need to drink this water and never be thirsty again, but I think we're making great strides and great, um, uh, well, great strides in moving forward in that, in that drinking of the water by doing this Bible study. And I think it's going to be a great thing for all of us. But in this, I pray that we can break down the barriers of this, this world in which we live in to embrace each other, just like the Samaritan and the Jews. We're embracing our differences, but yet saying we are all one in Christ Jesus. And so Jesus, I think this, this is a great focus for all of us in this Bible study, to, to never be thirsty again. And that doesn't mean that we don't want to go to the next time and the next time, but it means that we're learning and, and, and feeding and living off that living water. That woman, the Samaritan woman, she was like, yeah, give me some of that, because I don't want to ever have to come here again. I'll never have to make that long trek from the city of Sakaar all the way out to this well where nobody else is, I won't have to do that anymore. Yeah, give me some of that water. And then Jesus said, the water I give will become in them a spring of water gushing to a, up to eternal life. That passage always makes me think about, you know, Ann and I, you know, we go up to the UP, and we've been going up there for years and years and hadn't been up there in a long time. And so last July, when we went away for our anniversary, we went up to the UP. And one of the things that we talked about on the way up there was the spring that we always go to. We take two five-gallon jugs, we fill one up, and that's what we drink while we're up there, and then we have the other one to bring home. It's crystal clear, just wonderful, cold, ice cold coming out of the ground, uh, spring water. And so we were talking about, oh, I wonder if it's still going. We got up there and we went into Norway just outside where that spring is going. We went over there with the jump. There it is. Still gushing up on the ground. I've been going there for over 30 years. Ann's been going there since dinosaurs, but that's all I did. It was, it was gushing then and it's gushing now. That's the vision that I have in this gushing, this spring of, of, of gushing water. Is that it is, is eternal. It continues. If it says in there, if you drink of this living water, then it will gush from you like a spring. In other words, it runs forever. But if we don't feed that thirst, that desire to know more, then we can't gush. I think that gushing uh, to eternal life means that, like Jesus did there, he went out there and he stepped into a... a um, a society of hate, meaning Jews and Samaritans hated each other. 
And he stepped in the middle of that and he broke down the barriers and he spoke to her first. He didn't wait till she spoke to him. She would have never spoke to him. She would have never said a word. Look at the disciples when they came back with the food. They were astonished that he was speaking to a woman. That he was speaking to a Samaritan woman. Yet they were afraid. They weren't about to hit. Hey, what are you doing speaking to a Samaritan woman? You know that's against the law. They were afraid to say anything to him. But Jesus was breaking down a barrier of that society at that time. And he was with the, the disciples had an opportunity to witness to that. I don't think they embraced it in the very beginning. They were astonished. And they were afraid. They didn't even want to say anything. But they saw it. And they, they took note of it, and they, they registered it, and they understood that it was not what they normally do. But they knew Jesus to be not of what was normal for those days. So the same thing is for us. That we come together and we drink the living water, and we feed that. And we take in that, that water that's gushing eternal life. And then we go out into the community, and we are the ones that say the first word. Whatever that may be, give me a drink, is what Jesus said. It was pertinent for the time and the thing that he was doing. But what is it that you and I need to do? Are we in a grocery store line? Are we standing there in the gas station filling the car up? Are we in the side of the store? What are we doing that we could do that same thing in breaking down the barrier and speaking to somebody else and offering that living water? There's always an opportunity. God is at work everywhere that you go. It's just that we are not seeing that opportunity. The disciples came back to the well. They sat there, and the woman dropped her jar right there. This is extremely important. This was key to her drinking and uh, hydrating her body. And it says that she laid the jars down and she ran back to the city. She ran back to a city that shunned her. People that didn't want to talk to her. People that didn't even want to walk to the well with her. It says in there that they didn't share. Jews and Samaritans didn't share. In other words, that well. And so she ran back to the city and told those, the people back there of what she saw. Come see this man who told me everything about myself. That's key. I want you to know something. First of all, we shouldn't think bad about this Samaritan woman. She's not all bad. I got news for you. It said she had five husbands, but you know, it was the husband who could get a certificate of divorce and hand it to her. Couldn't have we don't know. It may not have been her fault that she had five husbands. It could have been the guy's fault. But yet, in these days, guys, you did nothing wrong. It's the way it was. Not, that's not right, but it's the way it was. <laughs> and so now we sit there and look at that. She went back and she did, told the people, come and see a man that told me everything that I have done. She said, she admitted there, she said, that what Marie, she, she said, uh, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to him, Her, I am he, the one in, who is speaking to you. She knows that the Messiah is coming, and he is called the Christ. She knows these things, but yet she didn't recognize him. Jesus said, I am he, the one who you are speaking to. She didn't grasp it in, at that very moment. But then all of a sudden she did. And she ran back to the city to tell everybody what had happened. She said, you need to come see this man. And they believed. Later it told us that they came to believe on their own once they met him. They invited Jesus, come back to, imagine that, a Jew all the Jews, all the disciples went back to the city of Sakaar and stayed for two days teaching and preaching. And they came to believe because of the things that he had told them. 
And they went and told her, we no longer believe because of what you said, but because we have seen it for ourselves. We as Christians have to understand that we need to be able to say that same thing. That we no longer believe because we, well, we have heard because some pastor talk about, but we have come to believe because we, we have witnessed ourselves. And we come to say that through being, experiencing and quenching that thirst through the living water. I think there's so much more going on in our passage today than what we're grasping. Jesus is teaching so much more than just a woman and a man at the well. And we have to understand that there were many people that came to the faith in those two days. But it all started with a woman who was shunned by the city, shunned by the people, who went back to that town and said, come and see the man. She even questioned it. She said, could he be the Messiah? Can he? In a question form. Even though she, he had told her everything that, about her, she still questioned, can he be the Messiah? And they all went to experience it for themselves. And they came to believe. Today, are you thirsty? Are you thirsty to nurture your physical body with water? Or are you thirsty for the scriptures? Are you thirsty for the word of God? Are you thirsty for your spiritual health? Father God, we thank you and praise you this day for the awesomeness of our God. Father, we see how you are a God who has stood up in the midst of, of the hatred that was going on in the, in, in the city of Samaria, Sakar, with the Samaritans and the Jews. And you embrace that. And in that picture, we see how the Samaritans invited Jesus and the disciples back to the city. And they spent time together <coughs> eating and drinking and, and, and loving and caring for each other. And they came to believe. So today, we do the same as well. We look at the Word of God, the living water, the joy of serving God. We come together and we say that we want to be the same as Jesus and the Samaritan woman. We want to break down the barriers. We want to embrace each other for who you have created us to be. And so, Father, today, we thirst. We admit we are thirsty, but we also admit that today is the day that we are ready to come together and drink of the living water through this Bible study. Father, we pray for your wisdom and knowledge to be poured out upon us as we receive God's word in a very powerful and living way. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> All joined together in our closing hymn.
right there is why you need to fill your cup. That's where the living water gushes to eternal life. Reaching our children, sharing the message of Christ, letting them see the barriers that we tear down, all for the love of God. Amen. Amen. Yeah.